warm welcome students and you are watching physics online class last week we have seen about moment of inertia right moment of inertia of uniform rod uniform ring and uniform disc moment of inertia of uniform rod is i equal to 1 by 12 ml square moment of inertia of uniform ring is i equal to m r square moment of inertia of uniform disc is i equal to 1 by 2 m r square i hope that you have learned that three questions thoroughly right with that hope we will start off today's session today we are going to discuss about theorems of moment of inertia theorems of moment of inertia the moment of inertia i depends on the axis of rotation axis of rotation and also the orientation of the body about the axis moment of inertia i depends upon axis and also the orientation of the body it is different for the same body with the different axis of rotation okay so here we have two important theorems to handling this case that is shifting the axis of rotation let's see the two theorems they are parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem these two theorems are very very important let's see the first theorem parallel axis theorem parallel axis theorem states that the moment of inertia of a body about any axis is equal to the sum of its moment of inertia about the parallel axis through its through its center of mass and the product of the mass of the body and the square of perpendicular distance between the two axes i repeat when you are hearing this you can't be able to understand anything when we prove this theorem you can able to understand very easily anyway this is the statement theorem what is it parallel axis theorem parallel axis theorem states that the moment of inertia of a body about any axis is equal to the sum of its moment of inertia about a parallel axis through its center of mass and the product of mass of the body and the square of the perpendicular distance between the two axes that is i equal to ic plus m d square i equal to ic plus m d square where ic is the moment of inertia about center of mass i is the moment of inertia about parallel axis m is the mass and d is the distance that is the moment of inertia about any body about any axis the moment of inertia of your body about any axis is equal to the sum of the sum of the moment of inertia about a parallel axis passing through its center of mass and the product of mass and the square of the perpendicular distance between the two axes okay i say is the moment of inertia about center of mass plus m is mass d is a distance square of perpendicular distance and i is the moment of inertia about an axis which is parallel to this center of mass let's prove this theorem let us consider a rigid body okay 
here this is the center of mass point the axis passing through the center of mass is ab moment of inertia about this axis that is about the axis ab is considered as ic okay now another one axis which is parallel to this ab so you can consider this is the axis that is de de is the axis which is parallel to this ab okay at a perpendicular distance d so distance between these two axes is d this is the center c the moment of inertia about this de axis is considered as i so our aim is to calculate the moment of inertia about an axis de okay so we attempt to get an expression for i in terms of ic so a rigid body we have considered in that ab is the axis which is passing through the center of mass that is center point so the moment of inertia about this axis ic and we have considered a parallel axis which is parallel to this ab that is de which is at a distance d from ab so moment of inertia about this de axis is considered as i okay in order to obtain the expression for i first we have consider the point mass m on this body that is this is a point mass having the mass m okay at the position p which is at a distance x from the center of mass so the distance between the center point and the point mass is x okay now we are going to write the moment of inertia so what is the moment of inertia formula i equal to product of mass and the square of the distance isn't it distance of the point mass so we can write the expression for moment of inertia of the point mass about the axis de about the axis de what is the moment of inertia of the point mass that is nothing but i is equal to product of mass and square of distance so mass is m what is the distance between this point mass and this axis d plus x Am I right? So, d plus x the whole square. Clear? So, the moment of inertia, moment of inertia of the point mass about an axis d e is that is i is equal to m into the distance is x plus d or d plus x the whole square okay so for a single mass we can write m but for the whole body whole body about this d e we have to give the summation of the expression am i right all the point masses means we should use sigma that is i is equal to, this is for point mass this is for whole body i is equal to sigma m into x plus d the whole square this is for whole body let's simplify this equation that is further this equation can be written as i is equal to sigma m into a plus b the whole square 
is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. So, x square plus d square plus 2xd. Right? So, sigma into mx square plus md square plus 2mxd. Right? Now, we can write separately sigma mx square plus sigma md square plus sigma 2d mx. Am I right? That is sigma mx square plus sigma md square plus 2d into sigma mx. D is the constant. So, we can take it as outside. Too. So, 2d into sigma mx. So, this is the value of i. Here, what is sigma mx square? The moment of inertia about the center of mass. Look at the figure. So this is the center of mass. The moment of inertia about this axis mass into the distance. The square of the distance. What is the distance here? The distance of the point mass is x from the center. So the moment of inertia about the center of mass can be written as i equal to m into x square. Isn't it? Or sigma m into x square. So Sigma m into x square is equal to what? I c. The moment of inertia of the body about the center of mass. Right? This is the first term. The next step, Third term we can consider. That is 2d sigma m into x. The term sigma m into x is equal to 0. How this will be 0? Because this x can be positive, can take positive value or negative value, right? So, when we add the summation for all the point masses, here one positive value, here one negative value, here one positive value, here one negative value. So, because of this positive and negative value, the summation will get zero. When we are adding all these values, same positive will be equated to the negative. So, we will be getting 0. Understand? So, sigma mx is equal to 0 because x can take positive and negative values. So, summation will be 0. And only the term sigma md square. That also we can rewrite as. That is Instead of sigma m, we can write capital M. Am I right? Because capital M is the entire mass of the object. Capital M is the entire mass of the object. So, these values we can substitute in this equation. And we can write the expression as i is equal to Sigma mx square is ic plus sigma mt square. For that, sigma m is capital M. So, capital M d square plus this term gets 0. So, this is the parallel axis theorem. Hence, the theorem is proved. Understand? So, what is the theorem states? Now, we can able to learn the statement very easily. That is... The moment of inertia I of the body about any axis. Here about D. About any axis is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia of a body parallel axis. About a parallel axis through its center of mass. And the product of mass and 
square of the perpendicular sides between the two axes so it's a very important question i hope that you have understand write and learn first you have to write the statement parallel axis theorem statement without mistake you have to learn if you understand this question you can learn easily okay without mistake you have to learn the statement and you have to write then this formula keep it in mind i equal to ic plus md square then proof you have to draw a rigid body and first you have to mark the center and draw a parallel draw a axis that is ab then draw a parallel axis de which is at a distance d from this axis then consider a mass point mass m which is at a x distance from the center then you can write the moment of inertia about this de axis that is i equal to sigma m into x plus the whole square expand as a plus b the whole square format multiply m in the bracket inside the bracket then write separately here first term is represented as the moment of inertia about center of mass and the second term instead of sigma m we can put capital m and the third term sigma m max summation of positive and negative will get cancelled so m max equal to 0 so the answer is i equal to ic plus m d square this each step carries marks okay so learn thoroughly let's move on to the second theorem that is perpendicular axis theorem perpendicular axis theorem actually this theorem holds good only for plane laminar objects okay this theorem only for plane objects that is plane laminar objects this theorem states that the moment of inertia of a plane laminar body about an axis perpendicular to its plane the moment of inertia of a plane laminar body about an axis perpendicular to its plane that means if this is the plane perpendicular is this this one this is the perpendicular axis okay so the moment of inertia about the perpendicular about the axis which is perpendicular to the plane is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia about two perpendicular axes lying in the plane of the body that is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia about two perpendicular axes lying in the plane of the body such that all the three axes are mutually perpendicular and have a common point listen perpendicular axis theorem states that the moment of inertia of a plane laminar body about an axis perpendicular to its plane is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia about two perpendicular axes lying in the same plane of the body such that all the three axes are mutually perpendicular and have a common point when we prove this theorem the statement can be very clear to you okay the theorem can be written as i z is equal to i x plus i y i z is equal to i x plus i y that is i z is the moment of inertia about z axis i x is the moment of inertia about x axis i y is moment of inertia about y axis that means let x and y axis lie in the plane this is considered as a plane so this is x axis and this is y axis okay so if this x and y are lying in the plane then z axis which is perpendicular to this plane that is perpendicular means this is the perpendicular direction am i right this is the this is the perpendicular direction we cannot draw in the space so we can draw 
in this direction or this direction is at axis. Okay. Or else, if this is x axis, if this is y axis, both are lying in this plane. And z will be perpendicular to this x and y. So, where I z is the moment of inertia about z axis. I x and I y are the moment of inertia about x and y axis. These two are lying in this plane and this is the perpendicular to this plane. So, we can write the theorem as I x I z is equal to I x plus I y. Okay. So, the moment of inertia about any axis perpendicular to the plane is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia about the two perpendicular axes which are lying in the same plane such that the three axes have the common point. Let's prove this theorem. Let us consider a plane lamina. Okay. Here an object O of negligible thickness is placed on the origin. Okay, let us consider a plane laminar object of negligible thickness which lies on the origin. X and Y are in the same plane. So we can draw this is the X axis. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. X and y-axis are lying on the plane. So, is it axis which is perpendicular to this plane? So, we can draw is it axis here. This is is it. Here this lamina is considered of many masses. Many point masses. So first we can choose one point mass. Isn't it? So lamina is considered to be made up of large number of masses. Particle of masses M. First we can choose the one point mass. That is located at a point P. So this is the point mass. At the position P. Okay, which is at a distance R from the arch. R from the arch. Now this point has a coordinate as x comma y. From uh, that is this is the point. Here the distances. This is the x distance and this is the y distance. This is the x distance and this is the y distance. So, we can write this is the x comma y coordinate. Right? And which is located at a distance r from the origin. Clear? Laminar, x axis, y axis, z axis. One point mass is considered that is located at point P. And which is at a distance r from the origin. And this has the coordinate x and y. Let's write the moment of inertia. That is, the moment of inertia about the z axis, i z is equal to our mass into square of the distance. So, mass is m. What is the distance here? The ma point mass is at a distance r from the z axis. So, we can write i z is equal to m r square. Isn't it? That is, the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of the particle about z axis is i z is equal to m r square. This is for a single point mass. So for a entire lamina. We can write sigma m r square. The moment of inertia of the entire lamina about z axis i z is equal to sigma m r square. 
right what is r r square look at this figure here if this is r means if this is r means we can write r square is equal to x square plus y square x and y are perpendicular axis. So, we can use the Pythagoras theorem as r square is equal to what? This is the x distance, x square. This is the y distance, y square. So, x square plus y square. So, r square is equal to x square plus y square. Now, we can substitute this in this equation. That is, i z is equal to sigma m into what is r square x square plus y square again we can write it as sigma m x square plus sigma m y square isn't it here what is sigma m x square what is sigma m y square this is also product of mass into square of distance. So, moment of inertia. Right? So, sigma m x square is the moment of inertia about which axis? Let's see the figure. So, about this axis, what is the moment of inertia? That is m into x square. Am I right? The distance is from the axis to the point is x. So, about y axis, the moment of inertia is m into x square. So, instead of sigma m x square, we can write this is i y. Am I right? This is the moment of inertia of the body about an y axis. Similarly, the term sigma m y square. Again, look at the figure. m y square. So, about this axis, x axis means from the axis to the point at a distance y. So, m into y square is the moment of inertia about x axis. Clear? So, sigma m y square is equal to i x. That is the moment of inertia about x axis is sigma m y square. Moment of inertia about y axis sigma m x square. Listen carefully. These two terms i y equal to sigma m x square. I x is equal to sigma m y square. The distance. Okay. So, substituting these values in this equation, we got i z is equal to i x plus i y. Hence, the theorem is proved. What is the theorem? I z is equal to I x plus I y. That is the perpendicular axis theorem. The moment of inertia of a plane laminar body about an axis perpendicular to the plane is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia of the two perpendicular axes lying in the plane. Plane of the body such that all three axes have a common point. This is the perpendicular to the plane. These two are mutually perpendicular to the lying in the plane. And all three axes have the common point. Understand students? So for this theorem we have considered a laminar body. And two axes A, X and Y. And a point mass that is P is located at a distance R from the origin. This is the Z axis. So, position of P is X comma Y. So, we can write the moment of inertia about Z axis I is equal to MR square for entire lamina sigma MR square. Substitute R square equal to X square plus Y square and write sigma MX square plus sigma MY square. Then we can substitute the moment of inertia. We got the answer I is equal to IX plus IY. So, these two theorems are very important. Learn the statement without mistake and draw the diagram, write and learn. In your book, page number 262.
long axis 8 and 9 state prove parallel axis theorem state and prove the perpendicular axis theorem so these two questions are your study portion so study well students thank you